I would also like to appreciate the efforts of Ambassador Dennis Francis for his skillful stewardship of the 78th session of the UNGA. Mr. President, the father of our nation, Kaide Azam Muhammad Ali Jannah, declared in 1947 that we stand by the United Nations Charter and will gladly make our full contribution to peace and prosperity of the world. Pakistan has stood by this commitment unwaveringly. Today, we are facing most daunting challenges to the world order. Israel's genocidal war in Gaza, a dangerous conflict in Ukraine, destructive conflicts across Africa and Asia, rising geopolitical tensions, resurging terrorism, galloping poverty, stifling debt, and the mounting impact of climate change, we feel the chill of a new world order. In response to these challenges, our Secretary General Antonio Guterres called for the summit of the future. It led to the adoption of the 54 actions on development, peace and security, technology and global governance in the pact of the future. Mr. President, today I stand before you to ex express the searing pain and anguish of the people of Pakistan at the plight of the people of Gaza. Our heart bleeds as we witness the tragedy unfolding in the Holy Land, a tragedy that shakes the very conscience of humanity and the foundation of this institution. Mr. President, can we, as human beings, remain silent while children lie buried under the rubble of their shattered homes? Can we turn a blind eye to mothers cradling the lifeless bodies of the children? This is not just a conflict. This is systematic slaughter of innocent people of Palestine. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, an assault on the very essence of human life and dignity. The blood of Gaza's children stains the hands of not just the oppressors, but also those who are complicit in prolonging this cruel conflict. When we ignore their endless suffering, we diminish our humanity. It is not enough to condemn Mr. President. We must act now and demand an immediate end to this bloodshed. We must remember We must remember that the blood and sacrifice of the innocent Palestinians will never go waste. We must worry about their plight and difficulties and stand by them. We must work for a durable peace through the two-state nation. We must seek a viable, secure, contiguous and sovereign state of Palestine based on the pre-1967 borders with Al-Quds Al-Sharif as its eternal capital and to advance the goals <laughs> and to advance these goals, Palestine must also be immediately admitted as a full member of the United Nations. Mr. President, in a span of a few days, Israel's unrelenting bombing of Lebanon has killed over 500 people, including women and even small children. The, the failure to implement UN resolutions has emboldened Israel. It threatened to drag the entire Middle East into a war whose consequences could be very grave and beyond imagination. 